Welcome to the Summit City, home to the two six O's dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. I just want to be the best in basketball, so I want to be the greatest of all time to play women's basketball. So uh, I just know there's people out there working just as much as me, so I just want to keep working hard and keep that intensity going. And so one day I can pursue my dreams of being in the WNBA and playing overseas. So I just want bigger things to come in my life. I remember when I started in March, she could do zero pull-ups. She did have a great 25-inch vertical when she first started. Uh, she only weighed 150 pounds. Uh, one of our main mottos is do the simple things exceedingly well, and that's where we started. So we started the foundation, um, building her base, and now we've got to basically the peak of our pyramid of things that we can do with her. So uh, we didn't skip any levels. We did all the basics, and she got really, really good at them, and that's what's led her to become as great as she is at, at basketball and performance. I've watched her grow. Uh, the confidence-wise, the strength-wise, the jumping ability, her footwork, it's it's really amazing to kind of watch for a girl her size being six three six four to move like she can move and do the thing and be as agile as she is along with the strip. Thank you for watching Summit City Sports. To help broaden our coverage, we're asking you to become a monthly sponsor to our Patreon account. We produce weekly highlights and live video broadcast. When the Homestead Girls Golf Team won its first state title in program history, we were there. When Fort Wayne brought back three state titles in cross country, we were there. We believe in sharing positive stories. And Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Buy Hay Arena and this edition of High School Boys Basketball right here on SummitCitySports.com. We got Northside taking on Blackhawk Christian, and we are about to have the tip here at half court as we get ready to start this game, an interconference matchup to start the season here at Bayhay Arena. Jackson Fugate there to tip it against Kellen Pickett, and it is the Legends who win the opening tip. That's Jordan King, the big six foot five senior. Feeding that off to the freshman, Max Goheen. Goheen getting the chance to start at point guard tonight, and Goheen has that one bank off the glass and no good. Kellen Pickett the board for Blackhawk Christian. Blackhawk Christian coming off a state championship in Class 2A a year ago. This is Aiden Muldoon with a dish to the corner. It's a fairly new-looking Blackhawk roster as this ball goes out of bounds off of Bryce Sefton. Now, he's the younger brother of Gage Sefton. A star guard in his time at Blackhawk Christian. That's Kellen Pickett on the drive to the paint, puts it home. And Blackhawk Christian on the board for the first time. They are first on the board, of course. Baseline drive, Fugate to the basket, puts it home. Jackson Fugate with the answer and a quick one for the Northside Legends. Pickett slowed down, dishes to the corner. That's Sefton. His three goes long, and Fugate collects the board for the Legends. Setting and firing on the other side for three are the Legends with Eugene Young, but his three would not fall. Here's Isaac Smith. He's a guy who can light it up from beyond the arc. Ball is tipped and taken away. It's Young. Eugene Young slows it down and gives that one out as Fugate couldn't hit the three ball. Isaac Smith the board. Out to Pickett. Pickett for three. That comes up short and a foul is called. It's going to be against the Braves. That foul is going to go against number 34, Will Guthrie, getting the start tonight for Blackhawk Christian. Go, 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 go. 
Javion Davenport, the senior guard, brings the ball across the timeline for Northside. Blackhawks starts out in a man-to-man -man defense. They dish this one to Jordan King. Young calling for it down low. One player that Northside will be without this year is Tay-Tay Johnson. Suffered a season-ending, I believe it was a shoulder injury, a torn labrum during football season. And unfortunately, that injury is going to cause him to miss the entirety of basketball season. Of course, Tay-Tay is committed to play college ball at Notre Dame. He's going to play football there. And he had talked about trying to walk on to the basketball team as well. That's going to be a foul on Goheen. As Bryce Sefton, check that, Aiden Muldoon was driving down the paint. Corner three, that one won't go, and the rebound pulled down by Eugene Young. Young and Fugate were two of the leading scorers for Northside a year ago. A team that won a sectional championship at Carroll High School. They knocked off Northrop in the championship round as Muldoon drives and dishes out to Smith. We've been stuck at this 2-2 score for quite a while as we're now down to the five-minute mark in the first quarter. Foul is called, and that will send Kellen Pickett to the charity stripe. So pick it at the line to shoot two. Try and give Blackhawk Christian the lead. He'll get one more free throw, though he comes up short on that one. Of course, state championships at Blackhawk Christian has become nothing new. They've won three state championships since 2019. The difficulty for Blackhawk Christian was the loss of their head coach, Mark Davidson, when he died as a result of cancer, oh, wide open is Fugate, and he hits a three. Jackson Fugate gives the lead to Northside, their first of the game. Oh, Pickett gets a look down low, but left it short. That was Young defending him, and Fugate comes the other way. Dish to Goheen. Can the freshman hit it? No good. King crashes in, gets it back to Goheen. Young hits it from the baseline. Extra possession, and Northside adds to their lead. There's an answer from Blackhawk Christian, though. Jordan King gives that one off to Fugate, and Fugate will leave that to Goheen. A three ball is good. Or excuse me, two ball, two pointer, Eugene Young. I believe Young and Fugate have all the points so far for Blackhawk Christian. Step back three, Isaac Smith, a little bit strong, and a foul is called. And it will be Blackhawk Christian basketball as the legends will dig into their bench here. Rodney Jones checks into the ball game. I mentioned Mark Davidson passed away after a battle with cancer that in the end took his life. All good feed, but a block by Fugate as he closed in on Muldoon. Fugate's been doing a good job on the defensive end and the offensive end. And Jackson Fugates up to seven points already for Northside. They've had him defending Kellen Pickett, and that's going to be a challenge for everybody. Pickett's six foot nine. Now Fugate does come in at six foot four, but he loses five inches on Pickett. They get it to Smith, nearly knocked away. Fugate harassing defensively. That leads to a miss and a takeaway after the rebound by Pickett. Quick down the floor comes Davenport, and a foul is called. Isaac Smith called for the foul. Second team foul so far against Blackhawk Christian. Meanwhile, Northside's committed three. It's worth mentioning that the fouls are different in Indiana 
high school basketball this year. When you commit 5,000 and a quarter, you go straight to double bonus. There's no more one and one, not in the IHSAA at least. Davenport goes two for two. Matt Roth is the head coach this year for Blackhawk Christian and led him to that state championship in his first year. They're trying to open the season this year on the right foot by coming on the road and taking on Northside, but they find themselves in an eight-point hole here. Jackson Fugate called for that foul. Fugate's been playing so well both on the defensive and offensive ends today. I've got him for seven points and also has a block shot. Fugate is making it difficult for opposing players when he's guarding them. Guthrie off the inbound gets Muldoon. This time it's Jordan King. Check that. Devon Haney guarding Kellen Pickett. And Haney's going to be called for the foul. Northside's led by Gary Andrews, longtime head coach, led Lures to some state championships. That was as the girls' head coach, by the way, and now he's the head coach for the boys' team here at Northside. And, of course, Northside is without their leading scorer from a year ago, Breonte Johnson. But so far, off to a good start against these Braves as Pickett knocks down the free throw, and that's a much-needed bucket for the Braves. I believe Pickett's got all six of Blackhawk Christian's points. And he'll go two for two. Javion Davenport will come across a timeline. He gets a screen from Young. Davenport down the baseline a little bit long. And Muldoon grabs the rebound. Muldoon at five foot ten. Able to grab that board. Pickett trying to go to work. That's Jackson Hauser who hits a three. And it makes it a one-score game here at Bayhay Arena. Jackson Hauser in off the bench. Comes up with a huge bucket. Fugate will reset it. Fugate, a six-foot-four shooting guard. Gets that one to Devon Haney. There is some size on the north side end. This is Rodney Jones. Jones is five foot nine. Jones from the corner. Air ball on the three and saved by Smith. May not have needed to save it, but he creates possession for the Braves. And right down the floor goes Kellen Pickett. Coast to coast, and all of a sudden, Blackhawk has got it down to a one-point game. we got a foul called against the Braves. Looked like Hauser was in the area of that one. He and Jordan King, or excuse me, Devon Haney. King's on the bench right now. We're neck and neck with each other. Looks like Ja'Kai Rich has just checked into the game for Northside. That was nearly miscommunication. Jones able to avoid the turnover. Here's Javius Davenport, Javion's twin brother. Blackhawk appears to be in a 2-3 zone this time as we're inside the final minute of the first quarter. Three ball is good. Eugene Young, Jr. Give him seven points as the legend's answer. Eugene with his first three of the ball game. Here's Muldoon. Sefton guarded by Davenport. Double team on Pickett. He's fouled. Rich and Fugate in the area. Thirty-five point one left to play here in this first quarter. And Pickett off the mark with that first free throw. Second one's good. Pickett, two for four, I do believe, in the game so far. But I've got him for ten points at this point. 
A big bucket there to make it a three-point game. But can Northside answer to close out the first quarter? Fugate lobs to Young. Young bouncing inside and draws the foul. It's going to be on Blackhawk Christian. Luke Mansfield, the junior guard, six foot three guard, getting the start tonight. Check that. He's not getting the start. He's coming in off the bench. Davenport, the inbound to Fugate. Looks like Northside is going to hold for the final shot of the quarter. We're down to 14 seconds. Tyvon Anderson, double team, taken away. Muldoon caused it. Pickett dishes to Muldoon, looking for the lob, and somehow Pickett puts it in. Heck of a play by Pickett as Northside was looking to close out the quarter with a bucket. Instead, Blackhawk gets a takeaway, and they get a bucket to close out the first. We're back for the start of the second quarter on SummitCitySports.com. Sports looked a lot different back in 1952 when Jim Kelly opened his first dealership in Fort Wayne. Seventy years later, that original dealership has grown into the Kelly Automotive Group with 14 brands in three locations, including our new Fort Wayne Auto Mall and Kelly Chevrolet on Lima Road. Fort Wayne continues to support our local teams and businesses. Thank you for 70 years. We could have never done it without you. Visit us today at drivekelly.com. Anderson Heating and Air, locally owned and operated with over 50 years of experience. Call us today and get a free quote on a brand new furnace and AC, financed and available. Don't wait. Call us today and sign up for a maintenance agreement and stay cool. Our maintenance agreements will ensure that you're first in line if you have an emergency and we'll send one of our service techs out for cleanings twice a year. Call us at 557-0958 or request an appointment on our website. Call Anderson Heating and Air where your emergency is our emergency. We begin the second quarter, Northside jumped out to an early lead. They led by as many as eight points. Of course, that's not an insurmountable lead, and Blackhawk Christian was able to get back within one. That's where they are right now. Kellen Pickett with a big-time bucket. Give credit to Aiden Muldoon. He caused the takeaway and, in the end, got the assist on that play. He and Pickett exchanged a whole bunch of passes, but that's some good defense there by Davenport. Over and back. The official on the far side made the signal. The official on the near side to where we are may not have seen it, but the far side official called it. And it is a turnover forced by the Legends. Young will hand off to Fugate. Catch and fire. Hits a three. Jackson Fugate lighting it up early on. Second three of the ball game for Fugate. I've got him for 10 so far in the game. As Muldoon is guarded by Davenport. Man-to-man -man defense, it looks like. Oh, Davenport almost got the takeaway. That was Javion, but the bucket is good. Kellen Pickett. Well, how do you guard Kellen Pickett? He's six foot nine. Height-wise, there's two guys who come close to him on Northside's roster. That's Jordan King and Eugene Young. But Young has shown what he can do with the rock in his hand. So is Fugate. So I get this one over to Davenport. That's Javius Davenport who feeds JV on. Young, the catch and shoot, hits it! I think that was Mansfield who was guarding him and Young scored right over him. A catch and shoot on the other end, and the three ball goes. Jackson Hauser, his second triple of the game. He's come off the bench and hit two trays. King sets the screen for Davenport. The dish to Young. Young backs in, feeds it out. Javius for three, that won't go. Braves have not led since it was 2-0 early in the first quarter. They got a chance to retake the lead here. Muldoon left it short. Jackson Fugate comes the other way. The late feed and the basket goes. Javion Davenport. The legends answer again and keep it at a one score game but they stretch out their lead. Pick it. I thought he might fire that three for just a second. 
Gets that screen from Sefton. Muldoon, the triple, ties it up. Aiden Muldoon from downtown. I believe that's Muldoon's first points of this game. Davenport lost it, got it back. Getting inside is Javius. Oh, he missed it. Kellen Pickett with the board, and now Blackhawk can take the lead. Pickett trying to make that happen. He'll go to the free throw line. Jordan King called for the foul. That's King's first, first team foul against Northside this quarter. And Pickett gives the lead back to the Braves. First lead since it was 2-0 very early in the first quarter. It's never been a double-digit game at any point tonight, but the Legends had a good start to this one. Pickett again goes only one for two as King tips the rebound to Fugate. Legends have had Fugate guarding Kellen Pickett so far. Those roles are reversed right here. King backing in. Has it blocked? King got it back, though. Was that Muldoon? Missed three, and Pickett grabs the board. It was Aiden Muldoon. He's 5'10", guarding a 6'5", Jordan King. How about that play? But a foul's called on the Legends on the other end. Had a couple of impressive plays from the Braves tonight. Had some impressive plays from the Legends, too. Braves will keep possession of the ball here as Muldoon looks to put it in play. He finds Pickett. Muldoon. That lane closed, and it's knocked away and out of bounds. That's off the hands of Mansfield. Legends take over, down just one. Fugate, he's six foot five, but he's been running point for Northside for much of this game. Young will set the screen. Mansfield stays with Fugate as they switch defenders. Max Goheen for three. A little bit long, but an offensive board by Fugate. Oh, Goheen with very little space, and he turns it over. But Goheen stays with it, knocks it away. Blackhawk ball. They say Goheen touched it last. He's able to stay with Aiden Muldoon, but to no avail. Bryce Sefton, younger brother of Gage Sefton, gets ready to inbound for Blackhawk Christian. 3.58 to go here in the first quarter. First half, I beg your pardon. How do you stop Kellen Pickett? Right now they got King on him. Muldoon, right over Goheen, a little bit long. Davenport comes out with it. JV on, splitting defenders, hits the finger roll. And Northside's got the lead back. Pickett, the spin move, no good. But a second chance for the Braves as Mansfield created it, but they turn it over. Fugate, down the floor, going to take it. A little bit long. Young with the stick back. Eugene Young on the offensive end keeps it alive for the Legends. Muldoon will use the screen here from Pickett. And that's knocked away by Davenport. To the deck goes Mansfield and he throws it away. Davenport and Goheen were bringing the defense there for the Legends. They're trying to get a win against the Class 2A state champions from a year ago. It's typical that Northside and Blackhawk Christian open the season against each other, and that's the case here tonight at Bayhay Arena. Of course, Northside also was champions of their sectional a year ago in Class 4A. They knocked off Northrop in that sectional championship. 
They knocked off Snyder to get to the sectional championship, and Snyder gave the Legends quite a battle. Snyder has a new head coach this year, Josh Raconan. Oh, they slip it right through, and Davenport gets fouled. Young slipped it to him through traffic. He didn't slip it to him. He actually fired it to him. That ball had some juice on it. We have word that New Haven is leading Northrop 14-4 at the end of quarter number one as Davenport could not get that free throw to go. Javius Davenport will enter the game. Looks like Fugate's the one who gets a breather. He hasn't been on the bench all that often tonight. He is putting in the minutes. Javius Davenport, excuse me, Javion Davenport up to seven points for the game. It's a four-point lead for Northside. Sefton finds Pickett. He's able to gather a catch and shoot. Sefton knocks it down. Bryce Sefton. Younger brother of star guard Gage Sefton, who was a 1,000-point scorer in his Blackhawk career. He's got this game down to one. Catch and shoot, Young hits a three right back at you. Eugene Young. That's Young's second three of the ball game. Pickett, double teamed, turns it over. Jordan King comes away with it. He was double teamed before he found Goheen. Young, the catch and shoot, Pickett blocked it. Down the floor comes Muldoon, through traffic, floater, bounces off. Offensive board, Hauser couldn't put it back, and we get a foul, looks to be on the Braves, we'll see. I think they got Aiden Muldoon. Said team's third, I think that's actually the, that's the second team foul against Blackhawk Christian. Second foul against Blackhawk Christian. Second, two fouls rather against Northside as Davenport is picked up here by Muldoon. Fugate back in the game. He gets a screen from Young. We expect that the Legends would look a lot to Fugate and Young as they are two guys with a lot of experience and have the ability to score a lot of points as King puts it in. Jordan King driving to the basket. Introduced the starters tonight, and they referred to him as the king here at Bayhay Arena as we get a foul on the Legends. 107 to go in the first half. Another update, Concordia and Belmont are at the end of the first quarter. The Cadets have the lead in that one, 16-12. It's a new look for the Cadets this year with Johnny Washington having transferred to New Haven as that goes out of bounds, and the Braves turn it over. Of course, the Cadets do still have Cole Hayworth on their team. He's a double-figure scorer. He's a big six-foot-five, six-six, small forward. Guy who can shoot from the outside. A guy who can post up on the inside. He, by the way, is signed to go to Grace College in Winona Lake. Eugene Young fakes it, drives it. Davenport. Had a look for a moment, but then Muldoon came to close him out. They got Young posting down low. Pickett is guarding Jackson Fugate. Javius, the slip to Haney. Haney trying to fight for it. It's a jump ball. Possession arrow keeps it with the Legends. Fugate with a tough catch. Now he'll fire. And he hits. Jackson Fugate. A couple of sidesteps, and then he hits a three. Sefton will give that one off to Pickett. Pickett drives baseline. Steps up. Missed the jumper. And Young collects the rebound for the Legends. And they can hold for the final shot. They're down to six seconds. 
It's Fugate with it in his hands. Slips it off. Davenport at the buzzer, off the mark. But the Legends with a nine-point lead at halftime against one of the two Fort Wayne teams who comes into the season ranked in the IBCA coaches' poll. But the Northside Legends leading it 36-27, to and we will be right back and get a few words in from our sponsors. You're watching High School Basketball on SummitCitySports.com. Anderson Heating and Air, locally owned and operated with over 50 years of experience. Call us today and get a free quote on a brand new furnace and AC, financed and available. Don't wait. Call us today and sign up for a maintenance agreement and stay cool. Our maintenance agreements will ensure that you're first in line if you have an emergency and we'll send one of our service techs out for cleanings twice a year. Call us at 557-0958 or request an appointment on our website. Call Anderson Heating and Air, where your emergency is our emergency. Thank you for watching Summit City Sports. To help broaden our coverage, we're asking you to become a monthly sponsor to our Patreon account. We produce weekly highlights and live video broadcast. When the Homestead Girls Golf Team won its first state title in program history, we were there. When Fort Wayne brought back three state titles in cross country, we were there. We believe in sharing positive stories and setting the standard for how high school sports should be covered. Join us and donate today. Area sports looked a lot different back in 1952 when Jim Kelly opened his first dealership in Fort Wayne. 70 years later, that original dealership has grown into the Kelly Automotive Group with 14 brands in three locations, including our new Fort Wayne Auto Mall and Kelly Chevrolet on Lima Road. Fort Wayne continues to support our local teams and businesses. Thank you for 70 years. We could have never done it without you. Visit us today at drivekelly.com. It's 36-27, Northside on top of Blackhawk. Christian, we got some words to get in from our sponsors before we go any further. Big Eyed Fish has been around the Northeast Indiana area for generations. Like their Facebook pages for updated promotions and enjoy the best fish in Fort Wayne in a family-friendly environment at Big Eyed Fish. Kelly Automotive Group celebrates their 70th year in business. Shop all 14 of their brands at drivekelly.com. Tom Steel Tire has been servicing the Fort Wayne area for over 40 years. They will help you find the perfect tire for your vehicle and other auto repair services like brakes, wheel alignments, engine diagnostics, and more. At Ottenweller Contracting, we invest in our customers by providing peace of mind during the entire process from bid to build. Visit OttenwellerContracting.com to learn more. Summit Volleyball trains and builds the highest quality volleyball players in the area. From ages 5 to 18, our players are equipped with elite level skills and a foundation of life skills. Jump on board. Together, we can reach the summit. Anderson Heating and Air Conditioning is dedicated to providing the best possible solution for your home or business, a system and solution that fits your unique needs. Visit andersoncoolheat.com. We will hear from more of our sponsors again, but right now we've got to give you the first half statistics for this game. Well, I've got Kellen Pickett unofficially for having 13 points in the game so far. He has been a strength for Blackhawk Christian. Northside's used a couple of different players to guard him. They've used Jackson Fugate. They've used Devon Haney. And I believe they've used Jordan King, if I'm not mistaken, as well. Aiden Muldoon has three. Jackson Hauser has six. He's hit two threes off the bench. Bryce Sefton also has three points. Leading scorer for Northside is Eugene Young, Jr. He's got 14 points. Jackson Fugate, meanwhile, has 13 points, he's hit three threes, and he also has a block shot tonight. JV on Davenport has seven points, and Jordan King has two. Well, early on, we were seeing some really good defense against Kellen Pickett from Northside, and that was one of the things that helped him to jump out to the eight-point lead they had at the time, currently a nine-point lead. But Kellen Pickett was one of the guys who helped lead the comeback for Blackhawk Christian as they cut it down to one point. Also credit Aiden Muldoon. He got it done on the defensive end and came up with an assist to Pickett to close out the first half. A few more words from our sponsors. Close out the first quarter, I beg your pardon. 
A few more words from our sponsors before we go any further here on SummitCitySports.com. Are you ready to do what it takes to put your past behind you? Whether it's expunging your criminal record or helping you to get your driver's license reinstated, Jolly Law Firm is your answer. Sioka Cleaning and Restoration provides top-notch com commercial cleaning services, including janitorial, water damage, and state-of-the-art disinfecting services throughout Northeast Indiana. Online degree programs at the University of St. Francis are built for convenience and flexibility. Most degrees can be completed in 12 months. Visit online.sf.edu for more information. Apologies here for the delay. There we go. Specialists in design, build, mechanical, and refrigeration. Visit tjwindustrial.com. Earn your edge this season. PSM's Edge Training Program maximizes your athleticism through personalized performance training to reach your goals and get you to the next level. Visit parkviewsportsmedicine.com slash edge to schedule your free consultation. Today's game is brought to you by summitcitysports.com. Follow us on Twitter at 260 Sports. Like our Facebook page, Summit City Sports, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. A good one so far here at Bayhay Arena. It's Northside leading 36-27. Nobody's had to use a timeout at any point in this game. It has been a game of runs. We've seen Northside jump out to at one point was an eight-point lead and now a nine-point lead at the end of the first half. But Blackhawk Christian did cut it to one and two on a couple of occasions. So the Braves certainly not going away. Some new faces on the roster for both teams, or excuse me, some missing faces on the roster for both teams, of course, Gage Sefton, Josh First, they're no longer at Blackhawk Christian. They were two of the top scorers last year. In fact, I believe First was the leading scorer. Sefton not too far behind. They have since graduated. They were a key contributor to the state championship run that Blackhawk Christian put together last year. Of course, Northside is without Breonte Johnson. They'll be without him for the rest of the season. Suffered a shoulder injury during football season. So we certainly wish the best to Tay Tay as he tries to recover, although from what I hear, it will not be in time for any playing time this basketball season. So we wish best wishes to Tay Tay Johnson in his schoolwork and in his pursuit of uh, college football careers. He's going to be going off to University of Notre Dame starting next year. He's going to play football and likely to play or likely to try to play basketball as well. But other guys stepping up this year, including for Northside, Eugene Young and Jackson Fugate, we heard it earlier. Young's got 14 points. Fugate has 13, and those are two guys who can score in double figures. They're two guards who bring some size to the table. Young at six foot five, and Fugate at six foot four. So that can that brings an extra element to their game. Also, they've got range. They've hit a combined five threes in the game. And of course, Blackhawk Christian Kellen Pickett. He's six foot nine. He's tough to guard. He's been tough to guard tonight. He's up to 13 points already. And Isaac Smith. Haven't really heard from him yet as far as scoring goes, but we know he can light it up from beyond the arc. He had a game against Marquette Catholic last year where he hit nine threes. That's right, nine threes. And we're back after this break for the start of the second half. Welcome to the Summit City, home to the 260s dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. Dealing with joint pains, sprains, strains, or back pain? Make the Parkview Ortho Express Walk-In Clinic your first stop when you have an orthopedic or sports injury. 
Located at the Sport One Parkview Fieldhouse, Ortho Express has specialized orthopedic physicians on staff when you need it most. Get x-rays, treatment, and referrals to Parkview Care, all in the convenience of a walk-in clinic. Ortho Express is open Monday through Thursday from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. and Friday 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Call 260-266-4007 for more. Well, we are ready to start the second half here at Bayhay Arena. And by the way, we did hear earlier that Blackhawk Christian was beating South Adams 30-16. to That's in girls basketball over at Mark Davidson Court. Carson Watkins is on the call over there. Lady Braves off to a good start. They had a, a quality win on the road against Leo earlier this year. The Lions fought back after being down 11, but the Braves were able to answer right back and come back to win it by three in the end. However, they've since lost to Norwell. That was a blowout loss at the hands of the Lady Knights. As Pickett swings that one outside, Muldoon was thinking about a three. A catch and shoot for Sefton in the corner. That won't fall. And Eugene Young has the board for the Legends. JV on Davenport running the point here for the Legends. He finds Fugate. Fugate off the fake, missed the shot, and Pickett grabs the board for the Braves. Muldoon will dish that off to Smith. Muldoon, that ball might have been blocked from behind. They're going to call that north side ball. So it went out of bounds right in front of the, well, not quite the Brave student section, but the same uh, bleacher area that features the Brave student section. Right now, Blackhawk, Christian, and Wayne are the only two teams in Fort Wayne that are ranked in the IBCA coaches' poll. Fugate with a tough catch there. He'll fire a three. He's fouled, and the three will count. Jackson Fugate from downtown. His third three of the game. It's Aiden Muldoon who got him from behind. Now Fugate trying to add to it at the free throw line, which he does. Fugate up to 17 points as Muldoon is guarded here by JV on Davenport. Muldoon, extra defense there by, that was actually JV on who brought the help side. Javius was the one guarding him. We get a foul here against the Legends. Smith almost had it knocked away. As Pickett fires, missed the three. They battle for it, and Fugate comes down with it. I think that was Young who helped to keep it alive for the Legends. Tough catch by King. Check that, it's Haney. Devon Haney also plays linebacker for Northside's football team. His head coach, Ben Johnson, is in attendance tonight, as he so often is. Haney lost that one, and it's out off the Legends. That's Zach Growth. Sports director over at uh, ABC 21. Giving it back to the Braves. Guthrie hands that one off to Muldoon. Muldoon through traffic. He finds Pickett, and Pickett is on the board for the first time this second half. I've got Kellen Pickett for 15 points, but his team is down 11. Fugate off the screen and roll. Finds Haney. Haney collects and puts it home. Devon Haney getting some early minutes here in the second half. He did not start this game as Muldoon fires a three, and that is much needed for the Braves. They call that a two? Nope, they called it a three. At least that's how it's marked on the scoreboard as Muldoon gets his second triple of the ball game. He's got two triples. Jackson Hauser has two triples. Bryce Sefton has a triple as well. Fugate. Guarded by Smith. He gets that one out to Javius Davenport. Davenport. 
Isaac Smith's got some size as well. He stands in at about six foot five. Jackson Fugate short on the three. Muldoon runs out to it. Slips it to Pickett. Pickett missed. That was two steps and up in the air for Pickett, and he couldn't connect. JV on Davenport into the paint. Hits the floater. Little teardrop from JV on. That's nine points for Davenport. Offensive board there, Muldoon. Smith, wide open. Too strong. Knocked away. That looked to be off of Pickett, and it was. New Haven now leading Northrop 40-9. New Haven had a heck of a ball game earlier this year against Woodland. That was the opener for both the Warriors and the Bulldogs. Warriors jumped out, or Bulldogs rather, jumped out to some early leads, but the Warriors won it in the end off a late bucket by Trey Yoder. That's a little deja vu in that rivalry. Rodney Jones off on the three ball. Had the pleasure of doing last year's game over in Woodburn where Trey Yoder hit the game winner against New Haven. Smith gives that one to Muldoon. Muldoon in trouble. Davenport stays with him. They try to get it to Pickett, and he got tangled up. Eugene Young was the one guarding him that time. Fugate's on the bench right now, and Young, the six foot five guard, was tasked with guarding Kellen Pickett that time. I think we've seen three, maybe four different guys guarding Pickett. It's primarily, though, been Jackson Fugate who's been guarding him tonight. King sets the screen. He's back in the ball game. Blocked, but a foul. Muldoon beside himself after the call. Third personal on Muldoon. It's a second team foul against the Braves in this third quarter. But Davenport a little long in the free throw. Of course, I mentioned that Blackhawk, Christian, and Wayne are the only Fort Wayne teams that are ranked in the IBCA coaches poll. You'll get a chance to see Wayne tomorrow night as they take on the Leo Lions. Wayne's got a brand new head coach, Byron Pickens, and his family moving down to the Indy area. Oh, that one rolls off. 0 for 2 goes Davenport. Doors open for the Braves. This is Ben Gray across the timeline, and Pickett missed the three. Rebound comes down to Rodney Jones, and the legend's got a timeout. Gary Andrews just burned his first one. Now, while they take a timeout, we will also take a timeout. You're watching high school basketball here on SummitCitySports.com. North side ball, but Blackhawks going to come out in a little full court press and they'll back out of it, but stay in the man to man. Ben Gray stays back to guard Davenport. Got some good games to update you on, which we'll do in a minute around the Fort Wayne area. A step to the right by Fugate, but he missed the three. That appeared to go off of Pickett. No, they're going to say off the Legends. Off of Eugene Young before it went out. Gray picked up by Davenport. His foot went across the line. The ball did not. I believe that's the reason there was no call there for over and back. Sticking with the pressure, though, was Davenport, and he may have committed a foul in the process. That timeout that Northside just used was the first timeout that either team has used in this game.
Northside's largest lead this game has been 13 points. We're up 12 right now as Sefton goes for the putback, and he is fouled. Looked like he got hacked down low, and they might get young for that one. Indeed, they do get Eugene Young, Jr. That is the third team foul against Northside. Free throw's no good. Concordia now leads Belmont 26-23 at halftime. That's over at the cage, which is not too far from here. Woodland's got a 19-17 lead over Garrett. I believe that's girls basketball, if I'm not mistaken. Second one's good for Sefton. Foul is called. Also, Concordia girls are trailing Leo at halftime, but it's 18-14. Concordia tried to hang with Norwell earlier this season. I had that game, and uh, unfortunately for Concordia, the Knights pulled away with it late. Jackson Fugate goes away from the screen from Young. Young will go to the free throw line. Davenport Trying to find some help, and he does find it. That's Young, one-on-one -on -one with Smith. That's Jordan King on the opposite block. Young on the baseline, finds King. This is man-to-man -man defense by the Braves, and they are pressuring, pressuring the ball handlers quite well. That's blocked by Pickett on the inside, and then a foul afterwards. Kellen Pickett at six foot nine with a big time rejection. They get Jackson Fugate with the foul, and that is his third, and it looks like Fugate will head to the bench as Javius Davenport takes his place. Braves with a chance to get this game back to single digits. Any field goal would accomplish that on this possession. Ben Gray comes across the timeline. Gray gives that one up to Smith. Smith's been quiet as far as scoring is concerned. Jones got his hands on the, on the ball. Pickett, double team. Gets around and scores. And indeed, the Braves do make it a single-digit game. I've got Pickett for 17 points so far. King sets the screen for Davenport. Davenport down the baseline, hits a floater. J.B. on Davenport answers. Gray dishes that one. Hauser for three. Yes! Jackson Hauser, his third triple of the game, and we got a timeout. Timeout called by Matt Roth and the Braves. They use their first timeout, and while they take a timeout, we'll also take one here on SummitCitySports.com. It is the third quarter. Northside with an eight-point lead on Blackhawk Christian. Jackson Hauser, though, just hit his third three of the ball game, and that's coming off the bench, folks. That's right. Hauser did not start this game, but he is making an impact for the Braves in their season opener. We've got 45.7 seconds to play here at Bayhay Arena. The Legends with the ball. They can hold for the final shot of the third quarter. JV on Davenport handling for the Legends. He finds Haney. 
Haney spins away. Count the basket and a foul. Devon Haney getting it done in the paint. Jackson Hauser called for the foul. He came in with some help side defense but made some contact a little bit late. And Haney's got a chance for a three-point play. Missed it. Pickett tracks it down. And now the Braves can hold for the final shot of the third. We're down to 23 seconds as Ben Gray handles the point for Blackhawk Christian. Gray had the screen from Pickett. Almost turned it over. Pickett just got it off. And Gray puts it home. A broken play turns into points for the Braves. Ben Gray with his first bucket of the night. Davenport puts it in at the buzzer. Javius Davenport to close out the quarter. And it's a 10-point game going into the fourth quarter. Back after this on SummitCitySports.com. Anderson Heating and Air, locally owned and operated with over 50 years of experience. Call us today and get a free quote on a brand new furnace and AC, financed and available. Don't wait. Call us today and sign up for a maintenance agreement and stay cool. Our maintenance agreements will ensure that you're first in line if you have an emergency and we'll send one of our service techs out for cleanings twice a year. Call us at 557-0958 or request an appointment on our website. Call Anderson Heating and Air where your emergency is our emergency. In the fourth quarter with Northside leading Blackhawk Christian 50 to 40. First half we would see Northside go on a run and then Blackhawk Christian answer. Not the case really in the third quarter. Did Blackhawk just call a timeout? We haven't even started the fourth quarter and that's a timeout called by the Braves. That is rare. Well, we'll be back after this. I think we're just about ready to start the fourth quarter. I think I, I guarantee that is the first time, at least at a high school game, that I've seen a timeout called right as the fourth quarter was about to start. It's Blackhawk Christian who called it. And Northside will get the ball to start the fourth quarter. Blackhawk Christian coming off a state championship in Class 2A. Northside coming off a sectional championship. They're part of Class 4A. They knocked off Northrop to claim that sectional championship. And uh, Kellen Pickett, a little late getting on the floor, and did he just put a bandage underneath his chin? Well, obviously, if there's any blood issues, we want the athletes taking care of it. And by the looks of things, if that's the case, Pickett has gotten it taken care of. 
Here's Fugate with the ball. Fugate with 17 points. He leads all north side scorers. He also has three fouls. Eugene Young has played a heck of a ball game. He's got Pickett on him. Haney fakes the pass and finds Davenport. Davenport was thinking about a three. It's a long possession for the Legends. Kind of possession that would not be allowed in the college game. But Young cashes in on it with a jumper. I say that because the possession took over 30 seconds. But you don't have a shot clock to worry about in Indiana high school basketball. Ben Gray, short on the three. Javius Davenport handling the point for Northside. Davenport will bring it back out. He lobs it inside to Haney, and Haney is fouled by Jackson Hauser. Well, we've seen what Jackson Hauser can do from beyond the arc. He's hit three threes tonight. He commits his second foul there. Corner three, Fugate, and that one goes off the wire there over top the backboard, and that's automatically out of bounds. Muldoon handles it. He's got Javion Davenport on him. Pickett drives. Sefton was trying to feed Muldoon. Pickett double teamed, had the ball knocked away. They're going to say knocked out by the Legends. Right in front of the Brave student section. Actually, I think that's the JV team sitting over there. Not really a student section. Sometimes teams will bring their own student section to away games. Sefton flings it out to Smith. He'll let it fly. Book it. Long range. Isaac Smith. Silent no more. He had a game against Marquette Catholic at Christmas break last year where he hit nine threes. That's Hauser with the rejection. Here's Pickett down the floor. And he's fouled. Pickett wanted to make it a three-point play. Instead, He'll go to the line to shoot two. Of course, the downside of this is I don't think Pickett has had any trips to the free throw line where he's made both of them. Not tonight, at least. I think they got Eugene Young for the foul. But this time, Pickett starts it off on the right foot. Two for two goes Kellen Pickett. He's up to 19 points to lead all Brave scores. Javion Davenport has Muldoon on him. The seven-point deficit is the closest the game has been in this second half. Fugate with a tough catch down the lane, and that sticks in between the backboard and the rim. That's going to be a jump ball, and the Braves get the possession arrow. That's the way it works when the ball gets stuck like that. Right now Muldoon is calling, hey, somebody come down here and inbound this ball. Bryce Sefton will answer that call. Braves trying to mount a comeback. They've been down as many as 13. Smith, air ball, out of bounds. Boy, if he hit that one. Is there a better time to find your rhythm than in the fourth quarter trying to lead a comeback? Well, maybe there is, but trying to lead a comeback in the fourth quarter is not a bad time to find your rhythm at all. Javius Davenport guarded here by Sefton. Smith hit his first three of the game in the fourth quarter, got on the board for the first time in the fourth quarter. Jackson Fugate, he's been on the board for a while. Young for three. No good. Comes down to Muldoon. Muldoon got caught in between a teammate and an opponent, and Davenport takes it away. Haney, contested, count it, and a foul. Devon Haney, another chance at three the old school way.
Boy, I tell you what, Devon Haney doesn't have a lot of points tonight, but the points he's gotten have not come easy. But could not complete the three-point play as Hauser boxes out for the board. Kellen Pickett comes to set the screen. Muldoon off the glass, won't go. Lob down the floor to Haney. Haney, one-on-one, -on -one, zips it. Young for three, he hits it. Eugene Young from downtown, 12-point lead for the Legends with four and a half to go. That's 19 points for Young. Down the baseline goes Hauser, and he answers for the Braves. Well, if you're Blackhawk Christian, you know that time is ticking away. They've got it back to 10, but the Legends have had the answer most of the time when Blackhawk has gotten a bucket. And there's another one. Devon Haney with two more. Haney trying to help his team close it out. Corner three, pick it. No good. It was Young who got the rebound, and now Sefton comes out to guard Davenport. Davenport right by him. Javion for three and another one. 15 point lead for the Legends. Their largest of the game. And a foul is called. The basket will count for Pickett. Well, Javion Davenport's up to 13 points for the game. They call that foul on Haney. His third foul, second team foul against the Legends. Jordan King will re-enter the game for, for uh, Northside, rather. Northside had led by as much as 15 in this game, and they've done it without their leading scorer from a year ago, Bryante Johnson. They're not going to have him for the whole season, from what I'm told. But the Legends have plenty of dudes who can score the basketball and who can defend very well as Pickett completes the three-point play. He's got 21 points. Javius Davenport picked up by Mansfield. Javius drives, finds King, and King draws the foul. Three seventeen to play as Jordan King takes a trip to the line, and Gary Andrews will have a little word there with Jackson Fugate. Fugate's put in a good performance tonight, 17 points. Also has a blocked shot in this game. King a little bit short on that free throw. This is the season opener for both of these teams. Northside's next game will be Friday as they go on the road to play DeKalb as King goes one for two on that trip. Pickett drives and he walked. The Braves turn it over with 3.09 on the clock. Blackhawk Christian's next game will also be this Friday night. They'll go on the road to take on New Haven. And New Haven, I have to say, they're playing with quite a fire in their hearts after that close loss to Woodland just a week ago. King couldn't get that one to go. Pick it the other way. Smith catching fire. In and out. And that's going to be a foul, I think, on Pickett. Looked like he came over the back of, it's either over Davenport or King. Oh no, they get Davenport. New Haven, when we last heard, was up 40 to nine over Northrop. Northrop under first year head coach Shane Merriman. Huntington University grad and a former Carroll assistant. I think he also coached the JV team at Carroll. Isaac Smith feeds Muldoon. Muldoon's three is good. And a timeout. Third timeout used by Blackhawk Christian. They get it back within 10, but we got 2.43 to go in this ballgame. The defense for Northside has been real solid in this game tonight. And while we've got a chance, we'll go ahead and show you some of our more recent replays here in this game.
Here's some of the hustle defensively from the Legends tonight. After a missed three, the Braves get a loose ball, but then Javius Davenport dives to the floor. Of course, that was Muldoon dribbling through traffic, and somehow Devon Haney able to put that one in. A tough shot for Haney. He's hit a few of those tough ones tonight that have led to three-point plays. Another replay brought to you by Traction Athletic Performance. Good feed by Javius Davenport. His brother Javion cashes in on the three ball, and the Legends had a 15-point lead at that point. Their largest of the game. Blackhawk Christian down to just two timeouts, and it looks like they're going to press off the inbound. Nope, they'll just back into a man-to-man. -man. Maybe a half-court trap instead as Fugate does get it across the timeline. There's the trap. They swing it all the way to King. Oh, Smith was close to a takeaway. Fugate fires it inside, and King puts it home. Oh, Fugate threw that one like a quarterback. Fugate's up to 19, or excuse me, it was Fugate with the assist, King with the bucket. And we've got a turnover, I believe, on the Braves going back to the Legends. Ben Gray back in. He'll help with some of the pressure here. At least that's the look that they'll give to start it out. Eugene Young off the inbound. Young through the paint, lost it. Recovered by Fugate. King comes up short. Down to two minutes to play. Smith for three, short. Smith's been trying to find his shot from beyond the arc. Smith gonna try again. That's off the mark. Only one three in this game so far for Isaac Smith. Two misses on that possession. Davenport across the timeline. Speeds it up and finds Javius. Fugate wide open, but he'll drive inside instead to try and burn a few extra seconds. He'll draw the foul in the process. These two teams will play on Friday. Northside going on the road to play DeKalb, and Blackhawk Christian going on the road to play New Haven. Then they'll get significant time off. Braves' next game after Friday won't be until December 9th when they take on Norwell, and the Legends' next game will not be until December 8th when they take on their hated rivals from Southside, the Archers. That foul came from behind. It's on Bryce Sefton. That game will be at Don Riker Gymnasium this year. With 1.28 to go, Jackson Fugate goes to the free throw line. Check that, it's JV on Davenport, not Fugate. Davenport will finish this game in double figures as a timeout is born by the Braves. Well, we have a moment. We'll go ahead and show you some of our replays. Now, Javion Davenport has had a quality night score in the basketball. He's up to 14 points. Now, this is Javius to close out the third quarter. A little shot right over Landon Hauser right there. And the Legends close out the quarter up by 10. I believe that's Javius' only bucket so far in this game. But his brother Javion has put together a good performance, and that bucket by Javius... A key one for the Legends. Meanwhile, Blackhawks down to just one timeout. And JV on has one more free throw to go. A minute 28 on the clock, and JV on will connect. Muldoon gets a screen from Pickett. A catch and shoot three. It's good, and that's Hauser. Hauser's got his fourth three of the game. 
Jackson Hauser from downtown. Give him 14 points. Fugate quick down the floor, and Haney able to recover. Boy, we've seen very little from Max Goheen since the first quarter. He's back in the game and draws a foul. Bryce Sefton commits his third foul, and Max Goheen goes to the free throw line to shoot two. Legends are in the double bonus at this point. Max Goheen has yet to score tonight, but well, that'll stay the case for now. Eugene Young back in the game as he gives Devon Haney a breather. Short, and Pickett's got the board. Muldoon picked up by Goheen, the freshman getting a chance to start at point guard this year, and a foul is called, I believe, before the shot. It is on Goheen, that's his third. Of course, Legends will be without Briante Johnson all season long, from what I'm told by the assistant coaches. Suffered a shoulder injury during football season and likely will not be back at any point during the basketball season. He's put in a great career on the basketball court. Averaged 20 points per game last year as Muldoon misses but stays with it and puts it in. Get a foul called on the Braves as the Legends try to advance the ball with 40.5 seconds and Braves have already put the Legends in the double bonus. Aiden Muldoon called for that one. That's his fourth. If you're not used to seeing guards foul out of a game, we haven't had that yet tonight, but Muldoon is close. New Haven has officially beaten Northrop 57-30. That's our first game in the area to go final tonight. JV on Davenport goes two for two. He rolls in that last one. Muldoon through traffic to the paint, puts it home. Braves will press and they foul Fugate right off the inbound with 25.5 to go. It's going to be a quality win for Northside as they now have 25.5 seconds left to play. They'll knock off the defending Class 2A state champions. North, excuse me, North Side looking to build off a of last year's sectional championship, which the Legends won over at Carroll. Fugate adds to his impressive night, 18 points. Two for two. Fugate is up to 19. Ian Young with 19 points apiece. Max Goheen will re-enter for the Legends. We've seen very little of him since the first half. Goheen was the starter at point guard tonight. Seems like he hasn't been on the floor all that much, at least for the second and third quarters. Isaac Smith will let it fly. Short on that one. Well, that's the kind of night it's been for Isaac Smith, unfortunately, but a second chance for the Braves. Smith will fire again, and that's long. Smith with the offensive board that time, and Sefton will hit a three, but that's as there's just three seconds on the clock. Gage Sefton, or Bryce Sefton, Gage's younger brother, knocking that one down. But there's your ball game as Northside defeats Blackhawk Christian by a final score of 71 to 63. Great all-around performance by the Legends as they win this one 71-63. They win their opener and knock off the defending Class 2A state champion Blackhawk Christian Braves. Legends trying to build off their sectional championship from a year ago. Well, our Parkview Sports Medicine players of the game are going to be three guys who scored in double figures. Eugene Young, Jackson Fugate, and Javion Davenport. Young with 19, Fugate with 19, and Davenport with 17 points in the game. Eugene Young Jr., Jackson Fugate, and Javion Davenport are your Parkview Sports Medicine players of the game. Big win for the Northside Legends. They'll go on the road Friday night 
and take on DeKalb in their next matchup. Then they'll be off until December 8th. That's right, a whole week off until their next game against the Southside Archers, the heated rivals from Southside High School. And then Blackhawk Christian will also play on Friday night. They'll take on New Haven. That's a 7.30 tip-off, and then the Braves will be off for eight days until they take on the Norwell Knights. That'll be on the road over in Ossian. That's what's coming up next for these two teams. And, of course, we've got more high school basketball coming up for you tomorrow night, Wayne versus Leo. And we do plan to have high school hockey for you as well from the Parkview Sport 1 Ice House and more high school basketball coming your way both Friday night and Saturday night. I will be at Canterbury as the Cavaliers take on Columbia City in boys basketball on Friday. Then I'll be at Leo as the Lady Lions take on Columbia City in girls basketball. That's going to do it from here at Bay Hay Arena. For my cameraman, Ahmad Williams, this is Thad Goff saying so long from Bay Hay. You've been watching high school basketball here on SummitCitySports.com. Welcome to the Summit City, home to the two six O's dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. I just want to be the best in basketball, so I want to be the greatest of all time to play women's basketball. So uh, I just know there's people out there working just as much as me, so I just want to keep working hard and keep that intensity going. And so one day I can pursue my dreams of being in the WNBA and playing overseas. So I just want bigger things to come in my life. I remember when I started in March, she could do zero pull-ups. She did have a great 25-inch vertical when she first started. Uh, she only weighed 150 pounds. Uh, one of our main mottos is do the simple things exceedingly well, and that's where we started. So we started the foundation, um, building her base, and now we've got to basically the peak of our pyramid of things that we can do with her. So uh, we didn't skip any levels. We did all the basics, and she got really, really good at them, and that's what's led her to become as great as she is at, at basketball and performance. I've watched her grow. Uh, the confidence-wise, the strength-wise, the jumping ability, her footwork, it's it's really amazing to kind of watch for a girl her size being six three six four to move like she can move and do the thing and be as agile as she is along with the strip. Thank you for watching Summit City Sports. To help broaden our coverage, we're asking you to become a monthly sponsor to our Patreon account. We produce weekly highlights and live video broadcasts. When the Homestead Girls Golf Team won its first state title in program history, we were there. When Fort Wayne brought back three state titles in cross country, we were there. We believe in sharing positive stories and setting the standard for how high school sports should be covered. Join us and donate today. At the University of St. Francis, you'll find everything you need to succeed from business, nursing, the arts, all with a 99% career success rate. You belong here. 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 I belong here. The athletes has always been here, um, you know, and they're getting better. Um, you know, I'm watching, you know, uh, Summer City Sports, man, they're doing an awesome job. And, I mean, that's a plug. Them dudes are, are doing an outstanding job. And I'm able to be in Nashville and watch games uh, on YouTube um, that they're broadcasting, and I'm seeing the talent. And it is just truly outstanding. And, I mean, you guys have seen uh, the talent that's in the NFL now from Fort Wayne, Indiana, the talent that's coming up now and the talent that, you know, is, 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 is just here, man. It's just it's really, it's really cool. I like to stay active. I try to come in here at least three times a week and just get my one hour workout in. Since September, I think I've put on 22 pounds of muscle. I think my vertical has gone up plus five inches. I've gotten a lot faster since then too. I can hit the ball further. In football, I can push people around more. It's basketball easier too. Just being stronger just makes everything easier. Brandon started with Jim Rath's basketball training. After one of the sessions, he came up to me and he wanted to know if he could do more. So Brandon started the EDGE program in November. In addition to the club training he was doing because it offers personalized programming for his athletic goals. 
PSM Performance uses the long-term athletic development pyramid. At such a young age, it's really good for Brandon to set the foundation of athletic development. Since he is in season all year round, he has to be ready for all the physical demands. So he does a lot more strength training just because in basketball he sprints and cuts a lot. In baseball he's doing a lot of sprinting. In football he does a lot of sprinting and jumping. So preparing him to withstand the physical demands of those games, he does a lot more strength training. I like all the lower body stuff the best. I do goblet squats, split squats, back squat, front squat, a lot of those. Tyler knows what's best for me. He always points me in the right direction. He just pushes me to go harder every day. In four years, this, this could be you. you. At the University of St. Francis, you'll find everything you need to succeed, from business, nursing and science, to the arts. You belong here! Area sports looked a lot different back in 1952 when Jim Kelly opened his first dealership in Fort Wayne. 70 years later, that original dealership has grown into the Kelly Automotive Group with 14 brands in three locations, including our new Fort Wayne Auto Mall and Kelly Chevrolet on Lima Road. Fort Wayne continues to support our local teams and businesses. Thank you for 70 years. We could have never done it without you. Visit us today at drivekelly.com. Anderson Heating and Air, locally owned and operated with over 50 years of experience. Call us today and get a free quote on a brand new furnace and AC, financed and available. Don't wait. Call us today and sign up for a maintenance agreement and stay cool. Our maintenance agreements will ensure that you're first in line if you have an emergency and we'll send one of our service techs out for cleanings twice a year. Call us at 557-0958 or request an appointment on our website. Call Anderson Heating and Air, where your emergency is our emergency.